Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Why No One Plays. Today, we're gonna talk about a 4-star character who's actually quite different from the two I've gone over so far. Pretty excited for this episode because we just went over Chi Chi, whose biggest problem in my opinion is that she's a 5-star. It just so happens we have another unit whose problem is largely due to her ranking as well. So let's try to investigate the case behind Yan Fei. If this is your first time joining me on this channel, I just want to say welcome and I hope you enjoy your stay. For those of you who like to play Yanfei, don't worry, this video is not a personal attack. I'm not here to trash on your main or make fun of you for playing her. Why No One Plays is a series aimed at discussing characters who are unpopular to use by the general player base, analyzing from the perspective of those who don't use them what causes them to be unappealing, so we can bring to light possible ways to fix or improve their gameplay. I also want to probe into their design to see if there are any unique or interesting elements in their kit that might make them worth investing in. So with all that out of the way, let's begin. Objection! We got something to talk about first. This video is sponsored by an upcoming mobile game called Dark Nemesis Infinite Quest, which is a sequel to Legacy of Discord Furious Wings, you may have heard of it before. It's scheduled for release on Tuesday, March 15th, so by the time you see this, you can pre-register for it right now. Dark Nemesis is an immersive action RPG that focuses on character growth and real-time guild battles. You get to choose between one of four classes, Warrior, Mage, Assassin, and Gunslinger, each with their own array of abilities. Obviously, we're going Gunslinger because guns be everything, right? Anyways, the game comes packed with a ton of character customization features like skins and effects, and they have very detailed graphics and animations, especially for a mobile game. Along with leveling up your character and their skills, you can utilize special spirit mechanics, different wing designs, and unique companions to boost your power. They can provide you with a vast array of stats like max health, physical and elemental attack, and physical and elemental defense. The goal is to upgrade your wings to the highest possible level to make your character as strong as they can be. Dark Nemesis places a very big focus on story and PvP. They spend a lot of time working on the world building and player to player combat, so you can fight alongside friends or strangers in different modes like battle royales, 1v1s, and guild battles. If you're interested in checking out a new mobile game after you spend all your resin on Genshin, give this one a try by pre-registering using the link down in the video description. Thanks again to Dark Nemesis for sponsoring the video, but for now, let's get back into it. Yanfei's introduction to the game, and by extension her whole identity, can be summarized as always a bridesmaid, never a bride, which is an idiom used to describe someone who's every bit as qualified to be cast in the limelight, but just manages to fall short. Those of you who are fans of the Dragon Ball franchise, it's almost like Vegeta's whole rivalry with Goku. Everyone knows that he's a fantastic fighter and a force to be reckoned with in his own right, but he trails behind Goku ever so slightly. It's a common trope you see everywhere, and I'd say that's the easiest way to describe Yan Fei, as her situation contrasts from the other characters I've talked about so far. Her initial launch was in April of 2021, coinciding with Zhongli's rerun, a character many players desperately wish to see again after receiving an incredible amount of buffs. Typically, new 4 stars are given to us alongside a new 5 star, such as Yunjin and Shinhe, Goro and Ito, Shogun and Sada to name a few. That way, extra attention is given to the banner in question as players look to expand on their collection of both 4 and 5 stars. As a result, Yanfei's initial hype was greatly overshadowed by Zhongli's rerun, despite the latter being one of the most anticipated reruns of early last year. Those who already pulled for him the first time wouldn't be so inclined as to run through his banner again just to pull a 4 star, not unless they were super good or filled a niche yet to be filled in the game like Rosaria. She first came out during Child's rerun, but was a 4 star cryo support that provided great synergy in double cryo comps, and lest we forget her rather visually appealing design. But I digress. Those who've been around since the beginning may remember the period of time in early 2021 when we've had a deluge of what appeared to be nothing but cryo and pyro units for several months. Klee, Diona, Xinyan, Ganyu, Hu Tao, Rosaria, and so on. Yanfei joined in at the tail end of version 1, and by that point in time, the community was understandably growing exhausted with the lack of units with other elements, Geo and Electro specifically. Eventually that was remedied with the release of Inazuma and its residing inhabitants. Basically, Yanfei's lack of exposure was due in part to circumstantial poor timing. When we all saw her, we thought she was just another Pyro Catalyst user, creating a few redundancies between her and Klee, who wasn't very good either, so we had a bad first impression going in. Thus, no one ever really sought to give her much of a try. Of course now, things are different, as it's become quite obvious that Yanfei is somewhat of a diamond in the rough that we're retroactively discovering. Normally, I like to tease future videos coming out by posting the thumbnail in the community tab of my channel, and you may notice something unusual about Yan Fei's. Both hers and Chi Chi's are covering above 4,000 likes at the time of making this video, but the former has almost three times more comments than the latter, and a large portion of them consists of people's overall confusion towards no one playing her, as they can't really find any major fault with her gameplay. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and look at her abilities really quick to confirm that for ourselves. 
Yenfei's normal attacks send heat-seeking fireballs to the nearest enemy, granting her a Scarlet Seal on contact, and she can have up to 3 per hit or 4 with max constellation. Each seal reduces her charge attack stamina cost by 15%, which means at 3 you essentially have the stamina required to use charge attacks, or 60% with 4. And with how physically straining Catalysts are, it's a nice touch of skill expression seeing as how it's incorporated into her base kit. In some way, Yanfei's auto-attacking pattern is a lot like Child to Hu Tao's, where you essentially get off 3 normal attacks before finishing with a charged one. Very uncharacteristic of an attack pattern on a Catalyst user. The one thing about her that can interfere with usability is that if you notice, she has really slow projectiles. Like if you throw one in co-op and someone else runs, they can probably outrun it. It's a nitpick, but in situations where you're dealing with multiple enemies and want to get to that one in the back, it might get in the way. The damage scaling on charge attacks is not half bad though. You need the maximum number of seals to get the most out of it, but considering you were going to do so anyway, it almost matches Klee's charge attack on a 4 star no less. Sign Edict is her elemental skill, a blast of pyro damage that instantly grants her 3 scarlet seals if anyone was hit. So she has a win condition in mind and abilities that make it easier to achieve that win condition. If you remember my Lisa video, I talked about how she has a playstyle but her abilities don't really adhere to that playstyle all too well. So far so good. Simple elemental skill but it doesn't need to be sophisticated to be good. In fact, generally the more complex the skill is, the less practical it might be. Done Deal is her elemental burst, damaging all enemies on hit, giving her 3 Scarlet Seals just like her skill, and granting a buff that gives her more Scarlet Seals per second while increasing the damage of her charge attacks. Okay, just by looking at her attacks, her skill, and her burst, there's a cohesive kit designed around a playstyle. Charged Attacks Spacing out her abilities and normal attacks to maximize the damage of her charged ones, with very consistent output as well. No red flag to be seen yet, but maybe there might be one later down the road, so let's keep going. Her two passive talents are Proviso and Blazing Eye. The former grants her up to 15% bonus pyro damage when consuming Scarlet Seals, and the latter causes echo damage if she lands a critical hit with her charge attack. You get bonus damage by racking up seals and using your charge attack. Very nicely made. Nothing in her kit strays away from the goal of her attacks. It's very methodical, and poses an element of skill expression as you can't recklessly attack everything without thinking. I like it. All things considered, her kit was very thoughtfully made, not a single component out of place, and based on her number, she makes for a rather impressive consistent damage dealer, especially for a 4 star. So if she has such a well made kit, what's the issue with her? It's really that she can't do anything else, even if you tried. Her kit has rules to it, if you follow them, you get rewarded nicely, but if you try to do anything else, then your rewards are greatly diminished. I'm not sure if that's coincidental or intended, seeing as she's a lawyer who lives and dies by the book. Remember, Yanfei was released long into the whole pyro and cryo streak going on. Bennett, Hu Tao, Shangling, Diluc, Klee. Lots of well-known, well-loved, and to some extent powerful and versatile characters. That's quite a high bar for Yanfei to overcome, even among 4-star pyro characters. In order for her to receive any mainstream success, she would either have to be extremely powerful or fill a niche that no one or very few people do. See, support characters get a lot more leverage, as the general rule of thumb for team building is to have one main DPS, a sub DPS, and two supports, or one DPS and three supports. Supporting a team can come in multiple ways as well. There's elemental reaction supports, crowd control supports, healing and shielding supports, debuffing supports, all different fields. Damage on the other hand is, well, damage. Doesn't matter how you do damage as long as you do tons and tons of damage. Yanfei is purely damage. You can't really use her as a battery or a support, as every single one of her talents and even constellations are designed for damage. The problem is, she's a 4 star character, automatically putting her at a huge disadvantage over all the 5 star characters who have higher base stats, damage scaling, more powerful constellations, and likely a personal weapon that synergizes with their power even further. When it comes to damage, it's physically impossible for a 4 star to ever come close to a 5 star not only for the difference in power but the lack of multi-purpose damage. Yanfei's damage output is very respectable for a 4 star unit, quite possibly one of the best in her class. She has a dedicated win condition and all of her abilities serve to achieve that condition as efficiently as possible. But even among free to play players who don't exactly have all the 5 stars, there's not much of a need for Yanfei in their party as they likely have Shangling and Bennett who more than cover the demand for pyro units without taking your main DPS slot. And I'm sure at this point, unless you started playing today, everyone has at least one DPS 5 star unit by now. That's just it. She's a good choice, but she's never the best choice, and with the scarcity of resources in Genshin, it's not a very worthwhile investment for players unless they really like the character. And truthfully, there's not much of a reason to like her from a gameplay standpoint. Catalyst users are notoriously uncomfortable to use due to their lack of free targeting, high stamina cost, and ambiguous range. Yanfei's attack pattern does allow her more fluidity, but it doesn't absolve her of all the quality of life issues concerning Catalyst. To my knowledge, there's also not a very good DPS Catalyst at the current moment. 
You can't really mix her up in any way either. A character like Shangling can serve as a sub DPS or even a main DPS if you itemize accordingly. Or you can throw her in with the Shogun National Party and Elemental burst the crap out of everything. But Yanfei has only one job, persistent damage, and she refuses to do anything else. You can't use her in quick swap burst combos because done deal is made only for her. You can't use her as a support because she has no lasting effects. That means the only thing she can do is be your main DPS. Far be it from me to insinuate that she's the only one suffering from this. Razor, Xinyan, Noel, and Ningguang also suffer from being 4-star main DPS units. They'll just never be good past the early game once you manage to optimize 5-star characters. Those who main Yanfei will swear by her numbers being comparable to or even exceeding Klee's, which is definitely something, but considering how Klee herself is not the best, it diminishes how much credence is lent to Yanfei. Essentially, what it comes down to is that she's balanced. It might sound weird to hear that being a fairly designed character is considered a con. It is in a lot of games though, because 99% of people don't want average, they want the best. You certainly won't feel bad for putting time and investment into making her good, however, in the line of work she's in, it's quite a challenge to punch in the same weight classes that have Ganyu, Hu Tao, Shogun, Ayaka, Yula, Child, Xiao, and such. Gacha games are heavily balanced around the best characters. They're not the exception, they're the rule. You don't see Ganyu as that one in a million rags to riches story, you see her as the standard that all other cry units have to reach. Anyone who fails to do so will be discarded among the rest, and that's exactly what happened to Aloy. She wasn't as good as Ganyu, and so therefore no one plays her. Yanfei's case does bring to light Mihoyo's rather short-sighted approach to designing characters though. The only 4-star units who see widespread use are supports, which effectively means by being a main DPS 4-star you permanently surrender yourself to mediocrity, since you'll never be as good as the 5-stars no matter how much you try. That's just how big the gap is. Yanfei might be an option, but she's not THE option, nor will she ever be. Despite the best being excessively overtuned and overloaded, that's what the public's perception of 2nd, 3rd, and 4th place characters are. In other words, if you already invested into Bennett, Shangling, Diluc, or Hu Tao, which by Yanfei's release almost everyone has, there's no real reason to invest in Yanfei, she's just extra. Something else you can try out if you're tired of using the same usual pyro characters. For example, in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, it's like Flygon vs Salamence. Anyone with more than room temperature IQ will tell you that Flygon is a perfectly serviceable Pokemon and will more than meet your expectations of what a Dragon type is capable of. But against Gen 3 pseudo-legendary Salamence, you'll be hard pressed to say that Flygon is stronger. That doesn't invalidate him, but there are better options out there. As someone who routinely talks about how trivial Genshin's difficulty is, the idea that a character can complete all the content in the game doesn't constitute a pro if everyone is viable. That means the only way to figure out if a unit is worth investing into is by considering their viability in Spiral Abyss, seeing as that's the only source of endgame content right now. Yanfei, for all her damage output and optimization, just doesn't do enough to comfortably clear the ladder floors. Not unless you triple crown, level 90, C6, perfect artifacts, and R5 lost prayer. All in all, Yanfei doesn't actually have any serious problems in her kit. Her main problem is that there are better options out there. In a numbers-oriented game like Genshin, DPS characters either have to be the best option or the only option. If you aren't one or the other, you're never going to be good. Now, plainly speaking, improving her standing might be impossible. Two reasons why. One, 4-star DPS units can't be as strong as 5-star characters. That would undermine the significance of their rarity. By increasing Yanfei's numbers to match that of Hu Tao or Ganyu, that's inherently damaging to the latter's value, as why in the hell would anyone go after 5-star DPS units if Yanfei, Razor, Ningguang, etc. are just as good? Some of you might argue that in other gacha titles, there are lower rating characters who are much better than higher rating ones. That's a good point, but in those games you usually have a whole bunch of different ways to diversify a roster. You might run into a boss that you can only damage with long range attackers, or there might be bosses with high burst damage, forcing you to build a team composition that can withstand overwhelming amounts of damage. Genshin does have the foundation to pull this off, but it doesn't seem like they want to as that would defeat the purpose of it being a very beginner friendly accessible game. Let's say though hypothetically you ran into a boss that could only be damaged by Catalyst users. Boom. Yanfei, best and slop higher damage dealer for those who don't have Klee. It's just right now, every boss fight takes place in an open room where the only strategy you need is... Now me! Group up! And hit it till it dies! 2. We can't give Yanfei support functions because that's disrespectful and superfluous to her current design. Like I said earlier, Yanfei has rules, and she follows them. She has a clear goal in mind, and by adding extra things, it lessens the individuality of the character. She's perfectly fine as is. She doesn't need a buff that lets her increase her party's pyro damage by 20%, because that would only overlap her with Bennett and Shangling's theme of boosting pyro damage. That's bad game design, and I've already talked about the problems with units being able to wear every hat in existence, like this guy. 
Although, if I were to be honest with you, I don't think we should do anything to change Yanfei. She's a good character to pick up if you have a bunch of materials lying around and want to try something different, which is what people are doing already, so it's not like she's an obscure character slowly rotting away into nothing. If anything, she's getting more and more popular to use by both whales and free-to-plays alike, so this video might age poorly, but that's kind of the point. Anyways, I think we're gonna end it off here. Let me know what you guys think about Yanfei. Do you believe she deserves more credit than people give her, or do you agree with my stance that she's an average second option? Feel free to share in the comments. If you enjoyed the video though, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Consider following me on Twitter, joining my Discord server, and checking out my previous episodes on why no one plays if you haven't yet. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon in the next episode. Take care.